God is good. All the time. Glory be to God. There's a lot of uh, a lot of love just overflowing in God's house. Amen. Amen. Hey, the way it should be. Hallelujah. Amen. Healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. All for our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To celebrate the healing. How many of you know that you're healed by his stripes? How many of you know it doesn't matter how you feel right now? We are healed by his stripes. Amen. Amen. This is the beauty about our God. You, listen, I'm not even going to speak that. I'm just going to say this. When God says it's done, it's finished, that means it is. Amen. It's finished. Amen. It's done. No question. There's no question. Say it with me. No question. And there is no doubt. So when Father God says that it is done, it is finished, that by the stripes Lord Jesus Christ took on his body, it made us perfect. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on now. It made us perfect. Can I get hallelujah? So in that perfection, Holy Spirit told me, and we just got to be obedient. Y'all stand up with me. Praise God. We're going to open up in a word of prayer. And Holy Spirit said he wants his beloved son Sarge to pray. And in this prayer, Holy Spirit's going to flow through his back. How many believe in Jesus' name that when Sarge prays and says the name of Lord Jesus Christ, that the anointing of our Father would just flow through the Holy Temple and straighten out anything? Amen? I believe that in Jesus' name. Amen? Go ahead, Sarge. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for us. a beautiful day that we've had today, Lord. Of course, every day is beautiful because you made it for us. Lord, it is with your grace that we are here. Lord, just reach out, touch each and every soul that's here, especially those that are not. Let them also come to know you, Lord, to know that you are the one and only way to get to the everlasting peace, Lord. Lord, we also want to just remember, we have to let it go. Yes, yes Lord, we got to let everything go. Give it all to you, Lord. Let you deal with it, because that's what you want us to do, Lord. Not to have any worries, any regrets, anything. No questions, Lord, because it's all about you. Lord, just be with us as we go forth and just keep us safe in our journeys and our travels. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give somebody a high five. Praise God. <laughs> My man. How you doing? <laughs> Great. So blessed. I'm so happy y'all are here. Hey, don't forget Mama K. Mama K, see, that's what I love about Mama K. She don't stop. She's giving the angels high fives. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Hey, give the angels a high five. Huh? Love you, sisters. Yeah. Freeze frame. I love freeze frame high fives. My God loves me this much. Amen. Let's go, let's go through this. Now, what you're about to see is very serious, very serious. Um, just a disclaimer. I don't really want to have discussions, theological discussions about this, okay, because what you're about to see is real deep. Um, you keep your theology to yourself. I'll keep mine to myself. I believe in Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 So are you all prepared in, uh, in what you're about to see? It doesn't matter. You're the cheese to my macaroni. That's love right there, right? Come on now, where y'all at? Y'all just like eating naked macaroni? Y'all don't want no cheese on your macaroni. Okay, right? Now that's love right there, amen? Say it with me, that's love right there. How about this one? I love you more than cookies. 
that, that's Cookie Monster for crying out loud. And it still can't come close to how much God loves you. Hallelujah. What's the next one? I love you so much that I can't stop smiling. How, how many of you know somebody in your life that you look at them and they're just always smiling? I do. I know a couple people, and it, isn't it a blessing? Now, now I will tell you, um, one, of those, one of those guys that I'm mentioning right now that as I have my hands raised, there was one time I was like, everything all right? And he was like this, no. Things aren't going that good. And it was weird because I'm like, but, but, you're, but you're happy. You know what I mean? And I wish that I had that kind of face that, you know, that you know, I'm always smiling. And, and I love this little creature there because that's how they always are. Isn't that cute? That buddy could be crunchy right now, but he looks happy. Amen? I believe that we could all. You know what? I love what Pastor John says. Let me see your teeth or your gums. Can we do that for the Lord right now? Let's just see. Right. Ethan. There you go. There you go. Well, for, for a minute there, you were like, right? I, I believe, how, how many of you, that you don't have to raise your hands, but let's just say, for example, I love to use Walmart all the time, obviously, because I'm always there, it seems like. How many of you go in Walmart and like you're just, you know, you're just busy, you had a busy day, you just want to go in and out. And maybe you're looking crunchy, and you see that one person smile at you, and it just brights you up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Can, you, can you say it with me? That's God. That's God. Hallelujah. What's next? What's next? My butt loves you. <laughs> right? How about this one? And I will Sarge says he wants to hear that again. And I, I can't do it. God bless Whitney Houston. I pray she know Jesus. Amen. And she hit that note, didn't she? Hey, 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 hey. Young adults. God bless our young adults. Amen. We'll always love you. And I. Y'all, no one helping me out. No one helping me out. Huh? Yeah. That says it all. And I love it that somebody finally pointed it out. Thank you, Mama K. Let's give Mama K a round of applause. <laughs> that beloved lioness is like, oh, my gosh, will you stop? You're embarrassing everybody. Michelle. Remember Michelle with David? Never mind. Huh? Trish, is encourage, Trish encourages me to sing, believe it or not. Y'all are in trouble because she encourages me to sing. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, my gosh. So let's get into this. Praise God. We're going to be in Romans 5. Um, I have my phone up here. I'm not texting. I'm not on Facebook. Um, as, as I got up here, Holy Spirit said that we're going to read more out of Romans 5, so whatever he wants, amen, we're going to do. Um, I, I pray, I pray that as we go into this love that the Father has for you, and we go as far as into the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, agape, amen, say with me, agape. agape. Now remember, agape is something that is called perfect love, okay, but I need to make sure that we're, we understand this clearly, this perfect love, it's only from God. Okay, we don't have perfect love. We have a phileo. That's the name of it. Phileo. What's phileo? A brotherly love, sisterly love. Amen? It, it, it's, it's, it's a love that we try to love each other, but unfortunately, it ain't perfect. The perfect love of God, what we say agape, is the love of the Father. Amen? Father God loves you. The love of his Son. Who is his Son? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And what Lord Jesus Christ displayed on that cross for you and where he lives right now, where he's at right now in you. Amen? So as we go through that, let's, let's start reading Romans 5. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, say it with me, faith. Now, 
before we move on, we've uncovered this so many times, but I believe that there's such life-changing revelation when we worship God this way and truly put the reverence, the worship, the respect, the thanksgiving unto the one and only faith. Listen to me, family. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy to say that you have faith. Can you get an amen? amen? It's easy to say, oh, I have faith. You know why? No one really can truly measure your faith. The only one who can measure our faith is when God tests us. Well, pastor, what are you saying? God tests us? Yes, he does. God doesn't tempt. The devil is the one who tempts us. So, okay, let's pause right there. What's the difference? How many of you actually thought about that? What's the difference? Okay, because I know, I, knew, I already knew Holy Spirit said no one's going to raise their hand because that's a hard one. That's a hard pill to swallow. Because when you think about getting tested and you think about getting tempted, the devil wants to combine those two. Can I get an amen? The devil wants to combine those two things and make it seem like it's the same thing. Right? Is it just me? How many of you truly know that testing and tempting are two different things? Okay, good. Most, most of you do. But there's still some that are still kind of confused. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. You see, testing comes from God Almighty where he tests your faith. Tempting, what the word of God says, is the devil tempts, God never tempts. Okay? So let's, let's would you like to know the difference? Yes, praise God. Would you like to know the difference? Amen. Trish, come, come up here, please. Trish is my wife. Amen. Amen. Trish is an example of how much Christ loves the church. Trish is an example of my relationship with God and my salvation. If you ever meet somebody who claims that they're a Christian, that claims that they're holier than thou, that claims, oh, I'm a preacher for 38 years, or I've been a Christian for 42 years. I've been this, I've been that. Guess what? None of it matters because let me see the fruit. Amen. Well, here's the fruit. Amen. Can I get an amen? Here's the fruit. Can I get an amen? amen. Seriously. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't have to prove myself to nobody. Praise God. You want to know about me? Go spend time. Talk to my wife. You still have questions? Go talk to my pastor. Talk to my elders. That's the order of my life. Amen? Okay, well, I talked to your wife, and I talked to your pastor and your elders, but it just can't get that good. Or talk to my church family. Amen. Can I get a hallelujah? Amen. Oh, it just gets gooder and gooder in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So this is it. So this is what I'm going to ask. Thank you. We didn't rehearse this. <laughs> She has no idea what I'm doing right now, so praise God. In a relationship with God, as I said to you earlier, how much Father God loves me. And we saw all those pictures that we laughed and everything, right? We had a good time. Amen? Amen. It just happened three minutes ago, family. Help me out. <laughs> right? We laughed. We had a good time. Amen? God tests. And this is the test. I'm going to ask you, Sister Jennifer... In the name of the Lord, this is just for illustration purposes, okay? I'm going to ask you to get up and just walk across and go back to your seat, okay? But do it right in front of me, all right? Now, for example, when a distraction comes, Amen. when a distraction comes from the enemy, when a distraction comes, when a distraction comes, you don't have to go that far. I thought you were going to come back already. Now, <laughs> Sister Jennifer just went out to the car and went to, went to Dollar General. <laughs> Hun, we only got an hour. We only got, gosh, I love you so much. I pray. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're so awesome, sis. Now, did you guys see what just took place? Okay. The test that I have gone through was... Am I going to take my eyes off my wife and look and lust at another woman? Can you get an amen? amen? Did you see what happened? The moment I felt her presence coming, immediately. Right? 
God, test me. If I don't have a relationship with my wife, if I don't have a relationship, say it with me, relationship. relationship. Now, honey, go ahead and go sit down over there, please. Now, Sister Jennifer, can you do that again? If I don't have a relationship with my wife, and now I'm being tempted, are y'all feeling me? My wife, I'm still married. I'm still married. This was a test, right? But you notice it wasn't a test in my heart. It's now temptation. And now, are y'all are y'all understanding what's going on now? Now say it with me in the name of Jesus. We overcome temptations. How do we overcome temptations? We we stay focused on our relationship with the Lord. Amen. Let's give God praise. So say this word with me: faith. There's many that say they have faith to overcome addiction, to overcome temptation. But did you notice that it wasn't my faith that overcame temptation? It wasn't. My faith was truly what I was focused on. Can I, can I, can I repeat that again to you? Because half the room got busy. Stop fiddling with things. Stop, stop it. Just listen. Can I get an Amen. Trish, come back up here real quick. Pretty please. I don't want to get in trouble at home, okay? We're just trying to do this real quick, okay? I don't want to hear at home. She, she'll do this. Why what, are what, 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 you going to talk to me in front of the church like that? No, I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I hide the bruises. See, Jesus in our lives, remember, i supposed to love Trish as Christ loves the church. Ephesians 5 says that. Can, amen? I supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. My gosh, is that not an amazing love? Amen. Hallelujah. So check this out. So Paul gives us this demonstration. Now remind you, the apostle Paul writes this not being married himself. But he writes it being married to God. Amen. And he writes it associating his relationship with the Lord. And he's transferring that anointing over the earthly relationship in a husband and wife. Amen? And so you notice that when the temptation come, I didn't go like this. Oh, oh my goodness, Lord, please, please help me. I, I don't, I don't want to look at that woman that just walked by me. I don't want to look at that. I, I, oh, I could feel that woman right here. I don't. <clears throat> Fail. I'm telling you this as a Christian. There's some of you that don't like this word right now, but get over it. Because there's only one true perfect faith and God is trying to teach us tonight how to overcome this devil and the distractions that he brings. And the only way you can do that is to have this relationship with God Almighty and then whenever something is troubling you, immediately you go, and I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay right here. I'm not going to leave, Father. I don't want to leave, Father God, because I know if I leave, I know if I go away, I know what's going to happen. So you tell me when it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I mean, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. You see, we struggle with addictions. We struggle with, you know, um, lust. We struggle with, listen, there's some of you, I'm not going to look at nobody. There, does that bless you? I'm not going to look at nobody right now, okay? But what you done did in the past, it's in the past, and it's dead and gone. You messed up. Guess what? It's over, all right? God forgave you. It's over. Can I get an amen? But we have to learn and grow from this. How do we learn and grow from this? Okay, pastor, talk to me now. Preach. Tell me. It's not your faith. It's his faith. Amen? amen? Can you get that? Can you get that? Can you register that? Can you register that? It's his faith. Say with me, his faith. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This peace is the resurrection power of Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ said, my peace I give you. 
My peace I leave with you. I don't give the world's peace. So come on now, family. When God Almighty, right, Mom Charlotte, when God Almighty says this, that here's Lord Jesus Christ saying, I will leave you my peace. There's a perfect picture of his peace right here. How many of you in God's house, how many of you right now live a life with this kind of peace inside of you? Show hands. If you don't, if you don't, do not leave here. You know what's amazing is that every time I promise this in the Holy Spirit, I rarely, I rarely get anybody who takes advantage of it, and I don't understand why. But if you don't have this peace in your life, Holy Spirit, don't leave here tonight. Come up front, and I promise you in the name of Jesus, I'll get every elder, every overseer. It don't even take, it just take one. But God just said, I'll call anybody who's willing to anoint you in oil to pray over you, and you will be overflowing in his peace. Can I get an amen? amen. But if you just hightail it when the, church, when the church service is over, if you just hightail it out of here, peel out, go down the street, listen, I can't do anything for you. But God Almighty told me to tell you, you want this resurrection peace of God living inside of you? Don't go anywhere tonight. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. Just stay. Amen. Through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace. I love how all this comes together. Say it with me. Agape. Agape. That's power now. We're talking about the perfect love, remember? And you see it on the screen. Love of the Father. Love of the Son. Love of Holy Spirit. We're, man, we're only in the first. We're only in the first sentence now. Here in Romans 5. But you notice how deep the word gets? It's not just reading to just read and go, oh, I read my scriptures today. Rebuke that. The word of God is alive. Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God, the, the word of God is alive. Sharper than any two-edged two sword, right? It will cut. Amen. My question is to you is how many of you want God to cut things off that, that you don't want? You have to be willing. Amen. Are you willing? Are you willing for God to cut, get rid of things in your life that don't belong? I pray he does. I pray he does all the time. You know, I pray in Jesus' name that as we breathe, we do it all the time, that as we breathe the presence of God, that Holy Spirit will flow through his temple, and when we expel, we get rid of all the garbage that does not belong. Amen. You know, let's do that for the Lord right now. Let's take a deep breath in our nose. Out your mouth. That's for the Father. One more time for the Son. For the Son. In your nose. And out your mouth. And one more time for Holy Spirit. Praise God. This one, try to, try to do it real hard. I believe and declare when you exhale, every foul thing leaves the temple of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Doesn't that feel good? It doesn't take a preacher to do that. You can be in your car. You can be at your house. Remember what Holy Spirit taught us about a month ago now. Here I am, Lord. Everything's perfect, including me. Amen. What Jesus Christ did on that cross, is it perfect? How dare we, right? How dare I disrespect my God when all I can talk about are problems? When all I can talk about is I need this, I need that. Oh, why don't you do this for me? How dare I? Lord, forgive me. I repent in front of your holy people. I just love it when here I am. Everything's perfect, including me. Amen. Here I am. Everything's perfect, including me. Here I am. Everything's perfect, including me. You believe that tonight? Here I am. Everything's perfect, including me. We know the power of those words, I am. He is the great I am. He is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There's some of us tonight that's sitting here in God's house, and you know yourself. I ain't going to look at nobody. You know yourself. You've allowed darkness to come in. And you're trying to fight. You're trying to fight out of it yourself. 
God says the reason why that darkness keeps coming back in you is because you're prideful. You're hard-headed. You think you got it together. You think that you can put a face on. You think that you could look a certain way in the community. You think that nobody knows, but Father God says, I know. And Father God says, I know what you're doing, and what you're doing hurts me. What you're doing upsets me. What you're doing insults me. And Father God's saying, I'm giving you breath right now to repent. Say it with me, repent. Repent is, Father, I'm wrong. Say it with me, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Father, I'm wrong. Say it with me, I'm sorry. And Father God, say it with me, don't let me do this again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now that's just a guideline. Hallelujah. That's just a guideline that we all together as one body, we confess that. But there's some of you, God showed to me right now. And it's, it's annoying because you just have a hardened heart. How dare you? Truly, how dare you? Do you know what God did for you? Do you know how much he loves you? Do you know what Lord Jesus Christ took upon that cross for you? See, if you just meditate on those things and how much God loves you, you will continue to completely repent and crucify this flesh. Amen? Amen. Guess what? I don't want to be Joey Karangan. I want to be a beloved son of God. Can I get an amen? That's who I want to be. Hallelujah. That's who I want to be. Every moment of every day. Hallelujah. Father, change me. Amen. Change me. You all know what's coming up. Look at what I'm going to do. I'll take every blessing that wasn't claimed. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I got a few. Oh. Because Father God sees Lord Jesus is right here. Therefore. So we know the love of the Father. There's no question about his love for you. This is why Lord Jesus Christ came. Is that not freeing? Is that not freeing for you? Your outlook on church, your outlook on Christianity, your outlook on religion, your outlook on denomination, none of it should matter because now you know the absolute truth. The reason why Jesus Christ came is because he said, enough of people talking about how much I love you. I'm here and I'm going to show you how much I love you. And I'm going to take it upon that cross. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to take it on that cross and I won't hold back. I won't hold back. My beloved brother, there's no question about how much God loves you, your value, who you are as a godly man. There's no question. People, myself, people will hurt you, cuss you, you know, betray you. And I'm sorry, but that's just the fallen world we live in. Amen? But we, when we know our identity in this love, say it with me, this love. When we know agape like we know agape that this is my identity and how much God loves me, it's this love, Brother Adam, that persuades me. It's this love of the Father that ha it totally consumes me. It's this love of my Jesus that I know no matter what I go through or people cuss me or talk about me or just want to you know, front me or flex on me, I'm just going to look at them. I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to be persuaded by hate or anger. I'm going to be persuaded by this love. Amen. And when this love, oh, hallelujah, come on now. Hallelujah, come on now. And when this love consumes you and it controls your body, where you can look at somebody that cusses you, you can look at somebody that hates on you, you can look at somebody and you go, I love you. I'm sorry I hurt you. I love you. I pray we can get over this. But I love you. I love you. And when you say this and you show the fruits of this love, oh, get ready now. Because Holy Spirit power in you. Holy Spirit. Say his name, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Woo. <sighs> say it again. Holy Spirit. Woo. Lion King. Uh, Mufasa. <laughs> right? Holy Spirit in you, the Spirit of God, the resurrection power, his grace, his mercy. His resurrection peace. Remember, Lord Jesus Christ said, I'm going to give you my peace. My child, I'm going to give you my peace. You see, we think about peace in this world when we got a lot of money in the bank account. 
I've been there. I can't tell you a secret. I've been there. Can't tell you a secret. More money, more problems. I never realized it until, guess what? When there was more money in there, like a lunatic. I felt like a squirrel trying to hoard nuts, and then there's a hole in the bottom of the tree, and it kept on coming out. Oh, just me. Okay, you guys, you guys are real holy. Okay. Okay, we'll just move on because you guys got it together. I'm sorry. I don't got it together. You guys do. I'm sorry. Sorry. We gain access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Say it with me, rejoice. This is your very being. Hallelujah. This is who you is. Say it with me, I am. Right? Do you carry? Do you carry the blessings, huh? Do you carry the hope? Huh? Do you carry? Right? When you enter the room, do you carry? Do you carry that? Is it in you? You see, out. <laughs> I did that on Emmaus, Brother David. I did that on Emmaus. Uh, a pilgrim was sitting there. She sneezed. I did that. She didn't find it too funny. <laughs> I had to go up. I'm like, I'm a Paul. I just, I, I just normally have fun with my church family when they do that. And I just, she's like, oh, well, I didn't spit on you. You just did when you said spit. How many of you agree that we're, we're too serious? That's why I'm so grateful for our, our holy church, our family. I'm so grateful for you all that you know that we just come as we are and we serve a God that loves us. I love, I love how Elder Howard always ministers to me that if we could just be grateful and we're going on, we're going on by the grace of God and this deserves no hand clap because it's all him, but by the grace of God, Trish and I are going on five years now pastoring God's greatest church in all this world, amen? And we are so grateful and I say this because all five years, Elder Howard, you always told me, be grateful, be thankful. If you only knew... If you only knew what it's like not to have a glass of water. Amen. Got here, I was still wet behind the ears. Still am. Amen. And, and I call him pastor. I, I respect and love my elder. Amen. And, uh, and he told me that. And, and truly, when you think about it, you turn on the faucet, water just comes out, right? Have we ever been thankful for that? I think we're only thankful when it gets cut off. Or the electricity, right? You turn on electricity and lights come on. How many times truly do we just stop and go, thank you, Lord? You know, uh, last night, had a powerful night last night, and I am recovering. Um, and what God has laid on our hearts is this word called gathering. And last night, Holy Spirit charged the church to just let everybody know it's time to gather as many people as we can. To come into the house of the Lord. To just be in God's presence. Now hear my heart, family. I know God lives in you. You called on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Yes. He, you're now his and he lives in you and through you. I'm talking about something different though now. I'm talking about something different. Are you all with me? In these last days, God has charged us to start gathering his people. And I believe that. Because of where not only we live in this Bible Belt, but I, I also believe because of this day and age, we've become comfortable. We've become lazy where, oh, I'll have them over to dinner. Listen, we're, we're approaching this time of the year now. I mean, it's, it's fall. I love it. You could feel the cold in the air. Don't hate on me. I, I, I love it when it's cold. I do. But, it, but also what comes with this time of the year is family gatherings, right? Oh, we're all having dinner. We're going to eat at auntie's house. Oh, what you bringing? I'm going to bring this and bring that, right? And you start to see people that, guess what, maybe you see on a, on a regular basis, 
But then sometimes you see people that you don't normally see. God right now is charging all of his people at those very moments to say, you know what? I'm glad that you're here. And I love you. But I need to ask you something. Will you come with me to church? Will you come with me into God's house? Well, I don't do that. I'm not very religious. Listen, I don't care. But I'm asking you, will you come? God promises that some of you are going to be so shocked and surprised that you're going to hear some souls say, all I wanted was an invite. How many of you received that, that all they wanted was an invite? But you know what's amazing is that sometimes before we even get the invite out, we put all the roadblocks ahead of us. It's right there on the tip of our tongue, Brother Mike, but, oh, well, this person is just going to chew me out. Or this person is going to say, hey, they're not religious. Or this person is going to say, oh, here you go, you think you're so holy. Or this person is going to say they don't want nothing to do with open arms church because of this, because of that. Right? And you start getting all this built up, and then what comes after that? Because there ain't nothing gooder that comes after that. You start getting anxious. You start doing one of these things, um, right? Listen, say it with me, stop. It ain't you, it ain't you. God is the one that's going to invite them through you, amen? Just be obedient, amen? Just open your mouth. Listen, there's so many of you, there's so many of you that you're the life of the party. Don't act like I don't know. There's so many of you that you're the life of the party. You're the one that's just loud and funny and everybody loves you. Why are you like that? God made you that way so you can bring in a lot of people into his house. Amen? So don't change who you are. You just need to just tell people, listen, it's time to come to church. I said last night, and it was a bold statement, but I'll say it again. Don't give them an out. All right? You tell them, come to Open Arms Community Church. Tell them. You come. Come to Open Arms Community Church. Don't be one of those, well, you know, I want to invite you to church, but you don't have to come to ours. Don't do that. Don't give them an out. You know why? They'll take it. Hello? You tell them, come to Open Arms Community Church. We'll love you. We'll hug on you. It's going to be the, the best thing for you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. I didn't think we were going to go there, but praise God we did. Amen? Praise God we did. But God, say it with me, but God. But God proves his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that was um, verse 8. Amen? That's verse 8. So once again earlier, a few minutes ago, I, I told you that, you know, we just went through verse 1. We just went through verse 1. And you saw how, how deep just verse 1 was as far as God's love for you. Faith. Faith, is it your own faith? Faith has a name. Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And when you're focused on the faith, when you're focused on Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, you saw the difference between being tested by God, amen. When you're in a relationship with God, guess what? Everything's a test. Do you like that? Do you like that? When you're in a relationship, when you're a worshiper of God, everything's a test. Oh, it gets gooder and gooder. You want to hear the gooder and gooder? You passed. Hallelujah. You passed. Hallelujah. You passed. But if you don't have a relationship with God, I felt it, Brother Dave, right when you did that. If you're religious with God, The devil knows. See, people don't realize that. If you don't believe me, read Acts 19. Read Acts 19. You'll read the story about someone who thought that they can do the same things that Christians do, but he, he wasn't a Christian. He was religious. And what happened? The devil tore him up, ran out of there butt naked. Is that you tonight? Is that you tonight? Are, 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 you, are you a labeled Christian, but 
in your heart, you really don't know what you are? Or are you a beloved child of God that you know, that you know no matter what happens, that you know no matter where you go, God Almighty has been there. Can I get a hallelujah? That you know that you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That you know that the faith, all capital letters, Lord Jesus Christ, that you know that your faith is alive and true and lives inside of you. Because you say amen, so how does your words line up with the faith? Right? Isn't that beautiful? If we say that we have him as our faith, then what should come out? Remember the piñata, right? You remember the piñata? Does his goodness come out of you? Huh? When you're being shaken, right? Because this world will shake you. People will shake you, right? What kind of fruits are falling off your trees? Is it lemons? Huh? I got pineapples on mine, even though it don't grow in a tree. Oh, and they're so sweet and delicious. How much does God love you? How much does God love you? You look up on that screen. I pray in Jesus' name. His love goes farther than what you do. It ain't about what you do. It ain't about me preaching a message. Where are you intimately with God? Where are you? I love still moments like this because Holy Spirit right now is flooding our hearts. There's some of you right now that you're on the, you're on the borderline of just breaking through. You're on that borderline. You're right there. God is filling your hearts. You're just about to bust out crying. Let go. Because you know what? It doesn't matter that glorious day when we're eyeball to eyeball with our maker. Ain't nobody going to be standing beside you, in front of you. It's just you and him. Can I get a hallelujah? And what God is going to say is, I moved on you that night. I moved on you. And I am so proud of you because you gave it all. Will you give it all tonight? Please, if you have that heart that you've been doing this and that, you've been a Christian, you served on Emmaus, you did this, that has nothing. What God is asking right now, do I have your attention? Am I, am I flowing through your thoughts? Remember, are your thoughts the footprints of gold? Or are your thoughts the footprints of garbage? Is your thoughts filthy? God says, it's time to get clean. I know your thoughts. Is your thoughts perverted? Is it lust? God said, let me flow through your thoughts, my child. What pulls on you? What tugs at you? This next statement is going to get some of you very, very angry. But I believe sometimes it needs, it needs to go there in order for you to let, let go. There's some of you more moved towards running towards your grandchildren, your children, than you are running towards God. God says, you need to make a change tonight. God said, those are my grandchildren. Those are my children. And God says, you are my child and I want all of you. Will you do that tonight? You see, all I'm trying to do is hit this reset button. Amen? And I wish it was as easy as going boop, 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 boop. That's the sound of my reset button. Don't hate on me. Boop, boop, right? But you guys know it's not that easy. It's a relationship between you and God Almighty. Stand up on your feet with me. Praise God. I'm going to read verse 2 real quick and uh, go to where Holy Spirit wants me to go and we'll close in prayer. 
through whom also we have access by faith. Say it with me, faith. faith. Say it like you mean it, faith. Remember, because when we say this word faith, that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Faith has a name. We have access by faith into this grace. Say it with me, grace. Amen. Say it like you mean it, grace. grace. This is the power of God in you. Amen. In which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and per perseverance character and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Amen. The Holy Spirit said that's what he wanted right there. There's some of you that don't see it, but then there's some of you that do. Here in God's holy house at his holy altar, when you come to this altar... Every time you come, this is what Holy Spirit wants you to see. Rivers of living water, like a waterfall, is pouring. Like right now, I'm standing under it. And his love for you, he wants to fill you, where he wants to constantly pour into you, where every stain, every garbage from the enemy, every distraction from the enemy is going to be washed away. I pray in Jesus' name that we take full advantage of this tonight. And this isn't just another altar call. We never see it that way. These are one of those moments where, Father, I choose to repent because sometime in this past couple of days, I made it about me. I made it about what I wanted or needed. At this moment, I just want to make it all about you, Lord Jesus Christ. If there's someone here tonight, and I know that there is, that tonight I was talking to your heart. Listen, family, I'm worshiping with you. Holy Spirit's been tugging on your heart. If that's you that you say, I, I don't want to question anymore my salvation. I don't want to play this game anymore. I'm tired of this devil having anything to do with my life. I'm tired of all the generational things that I've gone through all my life. I'm just tired. Can we give God a hand clap for that? Amen. If that's you, that tonight is the night that you want to say, God Almighty, I want to be your child. I want to make you my Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. That you want the peace, the hope of God to live inside of you. If that's you, will you raise your hand and, and raise your hand bold tonight? Beloved sons of God. If you would, would you... Will you come up front? Let's give God a raise. Elder Howe, I'm going to ask all the overseers to come up front. We're going to say this prayer of salvation. There will be, say it with me, no question. no question. But I know that they were quick. The Holy Spirit's all over them right now. And they said yes to the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What's happening, beloved brothers, is this is symbolic of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and the anointing of Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can give it to Brother Adam. I just want to speak on behalf of heaven right now. All of heaven is having a party. And they are, they are celebrating and worshiping. And Father God knew of this day. And I want to say thank you for your obedience unto the Lord and your boldness. Hallelujah. The word of God says that when you're bold for Lord Jesus Christ, he will be bold for you.
And I thank God that you're not ashamed. Amen. I'm going to ask you to raise your hands with me. Praise God. Now, how many, if you're like me and been locked up multiple times, you already know what this is like. Amen. When complete surrender. And I love it when you're able to surrender. That's what you guys are standing right here. That Father God, you have me. And we're going to say this prayer together. And it's the prayer of salvation. But you've already made it in your hearts. But Father God wants to hear it out of your mouth. 2 Corinthians 4.13 says that. Amen. So when I say this prayer, repeat after me. But read it. Repeat it back with such authority. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Father God. Father, Father God. God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. I stop. I stop. I bow down to you. I bow down to you. You are my Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. You are my Savior. Save me. Save me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. In the next breath. In the next breath. Seal me. Seal me. For eternity. For eternity. In my salvation. In my salvation. In you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. For saving my soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's beloved said, Amen. 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 <laughs> it's finished. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. Hallelujah. Come to the altar. Praise God.